MPL Live Show. I'm Serene Damaki. It's great to have your company. Tonight on the show, striker Christina Maxuti from the MacArthur Rams and winners of the 2017 MPL New South Wales Women's Premiership. First, a look at the highlights from the penultimate round of the MPL New South Wales Men's regular season. It might have been anything but pretty, but Parramatta FC have smashed their 14-game losing streak against the Sutherland Sharks on Saturday. Both sides have highlighted their 2017 shortcomings with the stalemate. However, both teams look to the future with such a youthful setup. Sydney FC took all three points from their clash with Bonnie Rigg at Lambert Park, a brace from informed striker John Idale, and a fantastic team goal finished off by Jerry Skodatis was enough to send the Reds home empty-handed. Sapata will get it back. Well, they're putting the passes together here, Sydney. Here's Skodatis! What a goal that is! Sydney FC are turning it on through Jerry Skodatis. Sydney United needed to win at Crema Park on Sunday to keep in the finals race. They had the perfect start with the usual suspects, Nick Ass and Payne, giving them a 2-0 lead. What happened next will have Rudin's men scratching their heads. Manly put on three unanswered goals, Sama Pendurovic and eventually Cooper in the 85th minute, all finding the back of the net and sending United crashing out of the 2017 title race. The Wolves are another team needing a win to stay in the hunt. However, they met a determined Rockdale-shaped roadblock, and Alex Chenak double all but put an end to the Wolves' hopes. Patrick and tell me reminding viewers late of the talent in the side when he pulled off this goal of the week in tender. From Wollongong, he's in. Tell me though! Oh, they have a goal now! And is there life suddenly for the Wolves? Patrick and tell me. Sydney Olympic have established themselves as a final threat with a blistering 4-0 win against Akoa. Gavin Ray's second own goal for the season didn't make it easy for the visitors, and not to mention a brace by Will Angel and another goal to Spyrakis. Arpia like our Tigers are only one game away from clinching the Premiership after defeating league leaders Blacktown City in the match of the round. A 68th minute goal from Jordan Murray was a difference as Blacktown couldn't level the score. The result sets up a mouth-watering last round with Arpia only needing a draw against Rockdale to secure the Premiership. A loss and Blacktown can snatch it with a win against rivals in the United 58 FC. That was around that was. Thank you for joining us tonight, Christine. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure cutting you off already. No, that's all right. Not at all. Bring it on. Congratulations on your uh, big win yeah. on the weekend, 3-0 mm -hmm. over the Football New South Wales mm -hmm. Institute. How would you describe the feeling of that game and leading up to the win? Oh, it was just you know, euphoric, kind of to end the season, um, at least, you know, finishing for right now the way we want to. We obviously, we still have um, playoff, semifinal, grand final, but uh, it was it was a goal of ours to be, have been leading the, the table for so long, just to really have it in our hands and be able to finish the season on top. It was, you know, for now the cherry on top. We still have a lot of work to do, yeah. but just just amazing feeling for us and the girls. Yeah. Well, that word euphoric, I mean, mm -hmm. that was just, that's visual in and of itself. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Coach um, Norman Boardman mm -hmm. commented after the, after the game mm -hmm. that, it's he still doesn't think it was the best performance and yeah. it's yet to come so yeah. where do you think you could have improved and what can we see next uh coach is always always um pushing us to the yeah. next level uh we could win probably 10 nil, and he would say that, <laughs> that we, we have moved a bit, which is a credit to how much he has, how much faith he has in us you know he really does think highly of, of our of our talent and our team so I think if we can possess the ball a bit longer, limit our own mistakes, and, and just keep working hard through it. We always seem to play better when we're having a good time and you know we're, we're working together. So I think if we can start the first uh, half and, and go through the whole 90 a little bit more cohesive, he'd be, he might be happy, he might not, but I think he'd still, he'd still think we'd have work to do. We'll do that. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that you, you found that you're, mm -hmm. you're at your peak when you're having fun, so it's just mm -hmm. having fun for the whole 90 minutes regardless then, right? I mean, I, I always have you a great time. <laughs> I look back and maybe the other one, not everyone's having a great time, but no, you know, I think we do. We all, when we're all out there smiling and laughing and I play with such amazing people, it's hard not to have a great time with the girls. Well, so. reflecting on that, reflecting on the year and how it's unfolded, yeah. what for you are some of the, the highlights and mm -hmm. even in particular, particular players yeah. who've grown and shown uh, throughout the year? Oh man, I just, I feel so lucky to have played with the people that I play with. I play with uh, Teresa Pelias, um, Lena Thomas, Kylie Ledbrook is probably the best player I've ever played with to date. You know, she's uh, a world-class player and someone that I always look to uh, uh, look up to and look to emulate. So 
um, really the whole squad, I, I believe that they're, they're the greatest bunch, but I just every day at training and um, every game, I'm always just looking around to, to those two or three and see what they're up to and just always listening and, you know, sometimes they like to yap my ear, but, you know, I always, good smile and, and, and just taking everything they, they, they uh, give to me. So and what are some it. of the key, key highlights? Um, what comes to mind? Well, we had a couple of good games. We played. Uh, we're playing mainly this upcoming semifinal. So our last time we played them, it was I think our team really hit their stride in in, in that game. So that was just an all around. Um, I think we went two now, had a few goals. So it was just a good a good feeling, a good vibe around uh, the game. But yeah, just the the, the locker room shenanigans. Uh -huh, you know, yes. just just the the, the pregame dance parties. I mean, those are memories that I think uh, we'll keep we'll keep in our heads for hopefully and a long in time. In your circle. Yeah, no cameras. No cameras at, at that. <laughs> and those one, they might do some really bad dancing, some off tune singing. But um, other than that, it's just it's just every time I'm out there, I smile so much, and oh, I think I think coach tells me to uh, focus a bit more. But um, with the smiles, with the smiles, with the smiles. He's yeah. like, he's like, are you listening? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's an exciting it's an exciting time uh, in women's football, mm -hmm. growing and mm -hmm. and succeeding. Mm -hmm. Um, and a perfect example is the Matildas, who took yeah. out the, um, who recently took out the Tournament of they Nations did. in the US, right? So, do you think there's still a ways to go, uh, Christina? And what are your aspirations for yourself and for the Macarthur Rams? Um, I think Australia has done amazing, obviously, recently beating the US and, and winning the tournament and, and everything. So, I think they're really on the up and up. And as long as they stay their course, I think uh, they'll be a force to be reckoned with in, in the future. Which is kudos to them. They, I, I know for some players, they work so hard, and um, you know they're trying to get football to be as popular as they can in this country. So I just think it it starts with the grassroots teams like MacArthur and clubs, and really getting all those kids involved and, and growing from from the bottom up, and then uh, you can see how that infiltrates and it becomes a more popular sport. So. I think just getting the, the word out, girls playing, working hard, and having really good role models to, to look up to. You know, the girls that are playing, the big names you hear about, are really outstanding women. So they're they're a good good person for the kids to look up to. Yeah. What about you, W League? Oh, I would love to. I'd love to get <laughs> get a sniff in there. Um, listen, I, I love playing and I love scoring goals and I love running around with my teammates. So. Um, yeah, if that, if that was to happen, I, I certainly uh, would have to take a hard look at it. It's definitely um, something to consider. Yeah, definitely something <laughs> to consider. You won't see me uh, turning my nose up at anything. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, just, just because of the relationships I've formed and, and so many of the girls that I do know out here, it does seem like it would be nice to just kind of roll into yeah. one another. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful league. It's great competition. and. Um, even better people, so I'd be lucky to be a part of it. Yeah. Staying on you, Christina, you're from mm -hmm. the US mm -hmm. um, where you played uh, college football right. before coming to Australia. So mm -hmm. tell us about your time in the US playing football and coming here. Yeah, so I went to Fordham University. It's a Division One school in New York City um, from New York. So I was lucky enough to get a full scholarship to go there. Um, academics first though, <laughs> over, over, over soccer. But yeah, it was, it's, a, it's a great setup over there and how the infrastructure that they have for, for football. Um, so what, is I, the, what is the setup? It's just, it's very, um, you kind of go through high school, you go through and then you get recruited and you go to college and it's all very set up. You have a, you know, a 20 game season and then there's playoffs built in and you're living at school. So you're with your teammates 24 seven. Um, wow. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, and but it really, you practice every day, train every day, so it's a good football and culture, and I really think that that is what sets you up for professional, professionally, um, just because it gets you into to knowing how to take care of your body and kind of how to um, show up to train every day and be serious and to focus and laugh and stuff, but uh, yeah, so I just graduated and I thought I'd like to see some of the world, and just thought soccer could take me anywhere and just... Uh, was picked Australia on the map. I went duh, 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 and there. Well, oh, what? That was it? No. Was, why Australia? Because you just kind of went like I that. Went, and uh, I went. Which which country speaks English and has the best weather? <laughs> I went. I think Australians speak That's English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> and we have great weather. Yeah, and beautiful weather and beaches. <laughs> I can second to none. So yeah. So when did you come to Australia? I came a year ago almost. Right. I think it's been 13 months or something like that. Um, a year ago and just stepped off the plane and... Um, Far out, just yeah, like that, Christina. Just, yeah, uh, much to my parents' dismay. I didn't really have too much lined up and, <laughs> you know, here I am now. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give it a go and see, see, see a bit of the world. You can't really travel while you're uh, playing at, at soccer at school. So how did you come about playing with the MacArthur Rams? So I uh, was fortunate enough to train uh, with Sydney FC last W League. Um, and a few of the girls, um, 
actually a fair few of mine of them played for MacArthur. So I got in touch with uh, Teresa, uh, she's now my roommate right now, um, four times Luther, and she just said, yeah, you know, I'd love to, I'll put in a good word with you, and I called Coach, Coach Norm, and he was like, yeah, come on out, and um, it all fell into place pretty quickly. I was at uh, Sydney Uni for preseason, um, and then I was just, it all worked out, and it was, you know, I th kind of felt like it was meant to be. The stars you know? aligned. Yeah, stars. That's what. Yeah. That's what, yeah. The stars kind of aligned for that. For that. Um, and it's been, I'd tell you, the greatest decision. I think. A great experience for oh, you. Had, had wonderful. Time. Are there any, or were there any, um, anything of the Australian culture or language mm -hmm. that you found weird or wacky, or that you find weird or wacky? Yeah, you know. When you came in? You know, there's there's a few funny stories. Um, we were training out at Valentine's. And I was driving with one of my teammates back, and she was dropping me off. And she was, and she was driving in the car, and she said, um, "Oh, I, I need, I need petrol." And I said, "All right, let's go to the gas station." She's like, "No, I have gas. I'm actually, I can drive on gas, but I need to get petrol." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, no, no, no worries. Um, do you need petrol money?" Uh, and she's like. No, no. She's like, oh, I'm gonna get petrol. I was like, she's like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna drive on the gas. I just, I just sat and there. And you were trying to get your head around. And, I, and we're going back and forth for five, ten minutes. And I just finally was like, I don't understand. <laughs> and she just was like, petrol is petrol, and I'm driving on methane gas. Mm. And I just thought, oh my god. Because gas in the U.S. is is, is petrol. petrol. Yeah. It's petrol. So I just kept thinking, like, I don't know what she's putting into the vehicle <laughs> right now, or what, or what switch she was putting in the car to to stop it. Um, yeah. And then one time, our coach um, said, uh, "We're training at the Arvo or in the Arvo." Ah, uh, yes. And I walked out of the locker room thinking, "Oh, geez, I don't even know where Do the you Arvo need the location? is." location? Yeah. I was like, "Where's the Arvo?" <laughs> I just figured out how to get to. To Valentine's, like I'm taking public transport. Like I'm, I'm new here. I'm new here. <laughs> like what is going on? I'm googling the Arvo, and oh, I, no and I way. just I just was like, okay, someone could have been like for the American. All right, it just means the afternoon. Yeah. So and how so, did you yeah. end up finding out that oh, it meant the afternoon? My, I walked out. My teammate. She goes, oh yeah, training in the afternoon. How awesome is that? And I went, is that what that means? And she was like. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, mm. I was it like, is cool. All right, let's move ahead and talk about your game this weekend. Another yes. big one. Yeah. Semi final against Manly United. How mm. do you prepare for a high stakes game? Oh, you know, I think we just try to keep the focus on what we've been doing and what works for us. We're lucky enough to um, have a home semi final, which was really important for us. We feel like we train and we play the best on our home pitch, which I think most teams probably do, but you know, you're just comfortable. So I think as long as we stay the course, we keep working hard and uh, everyone shows up on Sunday and training this week and Sunday, um, and just with a good attitude and, and uh, a lot of the same notions that coach will, I'm sure he'll, he'll give us a bullet points on what to do. But yeah, just a lot of it's working hard and uh, playing for each other really and just, you know, making sure you're not stitching anyone up. Yeah, I feel oh, that's that's my Australian. That's your Australian. That's, that's your Australian true. coming through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, good one. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, you did say semi-final. We'll talk about that offline. Semi-final. Oh, semi-final. Semi <laughs> semi-final. But look, before I let you go, it is shout-out time. So, anybody you'd like to say hello to or send a message to? Please. Yes, uh, my twin sister, Mariana Maureen Maxudi. Uh, miss you, girl. I will be home in a little bit. Uh, hope all is well, and I love you. Good. Well, Christina, it's been oh, such a pleasure. I can just keep going. Me. I know. Not I feel like I can talk forever. All the best yes, this weekend. Yes, thank you so much. No okay. Thank you. Here's goal of the week for round 21 of the MPL New South Wales men's competition. Time continues to tick. He ticks away from Wollongong. He's in. Tell me though. Oh, they have a goal now. And is there life suddenly for the Wolves? Patrick can tell me with a fine finish, got free from his defender, and didn't he make them pay? That's a great strike from Antelmi. Congratulations, Patrick Antelmi from the Wollongong Wolves, who took out goal of the week for round 21 of the MPL New South Wales men's competition. Let's have a look at the upcoming fixtures for the final round of the MPL New South Wales men's regular season. It's an exciting round ahead, which sees the Premiership being decided at two games, and it all comes to pass 3 p.m. on Sunday the 13th of August. Hakoa Sydney City East will host Manly United at Hensley Athletic Field. Top of the ladder, Apia Leichhardt Tigers host the Rockdale Suns at Lambert Park. If Apia win or draw against Rockdale, they will clinch the Premiership. This game will be live streamed on the MPL New South Wales Facebook page. Parramatta FC will take on, take on the Bonnie Rig White Eagles at Melita Stadium. The Sutherland Sharks play Sydney Olympic at Seymour Shore. 
Sydney United 58 will host Blacktown City at Sydney United Sports Centre. If Arpia are defeated against Rockdale and Blacktown City wins this game, they'll steal the Premiership. And the Wollongong Wolves play Sydney FC at Wynn Stadium. Thank you again to our guest tonight, Christina Maksuti from the MacArthur Rams. As you may already know, the Westfield FFA Cup Round of 16 draw has been announced with a record five teams from Football New South Wales competing, a first for the FFA Cup competition. And they are Sydney United 58 playing Heidelberg United FC. The Bankstown Berries will play Sydney FC. Hakoa Sydney City East take on Melbourne City and Blacktown City play the Apia Leichhardt Tigers again. That's it from us tonight. We'll be back 7pm next Thursday. I'm Serene Demackey. Have a great evening.